Welcome to 30 Minutes to Wealth, the show that teaches you how to build wealth through real estate. Our company, ProFunds Mortgages, has assisted real estate investors in achieving wealth for over two decades. Over the next 30 minutes, we're going to share some of our key strategies in real estate with you. Right here on 30 Minutes to Wealth. Hi, I'm Carmen and this is Jordan. Welcome to 30 Minutes to Wealth. The show that teaches you how to build wealth through real estate. Today we're excited to bring on a well-known TV personality that's going to share with us the best ways to add value to your backyard. We're thrilled to have Paula France from HGTV show Decked Out. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Jordan. This is Carmen. Welcome back to 30 Minutes to Wealth. We're here with our guest, Paul LaFrance. Paul, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me on, guys. Amazing. That's going to be this an exciting show. Well, I hope you're, I hope you're prepared. Because I do tend to monologue quite a bit. It's okay. You'll Don't be worry okay, about right? it. Oh, yeah, we're totally good. And I can't wait to share with everybody the awesome work you do. Thank and, you. Um, and, and bring it all to life. I know you came to my place last night. I did. And yeah. you took a look at my house that I've been having a challenge with, so we'll talk about that a little bit later. But sure. tell us about yourself. Well, as a small child, I don't, <laughs> I don't know how far back you want to go. <laughs> okay, sure. It's how did you get started in this whole HGTV? By role? complete accident. I had no yeah. intention of ever being on television. I just do what I do. So, I mean, I, I started uh, Paul LaFrance Design, which is an, an interior and exterior transformation firm. So I've been doing interior and exterior transformations, but in a way uh, that is a little off the beaten path, mm -hmm. um, mostly because of the fact I have no business training or design training for, the, for what I do, which some people are very surprised well, by. You're just naturally, naturally yeah. gifted. Well, well, thank Artistic. you. Artistic. I would really, uh, that was me fishing for a compliment and you gave me what I needed <laughs> I did. to think. I'm there very, I'm very <laughs> insecure. So HGTV, you have yeah, so decked, decked out. out. Yeah, so I mean, that, that whole thing started by accident. I mean, because I was, I ended up doing a, uh, a, a, a TV special, a miracle makeover on City TV, um, where I was discovered on that program by a gentleman named Mike Sheeran, who was the executive producer of Decked Out, Disaster Decks, Deck Wars, Custom Built, and then, and then I ended up doing other shows like Candace Handyman Challenge and now Home to Win. Wow. And uh, it, was, it was an intentional, it was an accident. He saw me and said, you need a TV show. And next thing you know, that's what happened. And I've been able to do what I love to do, which is be kind of creatively... Uh, unhinged, I think, would be the best way to put it. So I've been allowed to, to kind of push the envelope of the backyard, which is what I was doing before, but I was really given an engine to be able to do it on the, on the shows yeah. in a way that was really quite something. How long have you been doing the show? So we started filming in 2010, and um, so now my new show, which is coming out this spring, which is called Backyard Revolution, so it's basically decked out meets Deadpool. And it, so it's very authentic, it's very real, it's very funny, but has all the educational and creative aspects that people have come to expect from shows like that. So it's just now. a little bit more raw than very raw. Decked Out? It's, it, shows the, it shows the mistakes that are always going to happen on any type of construction project. Yeah. I think people would love mm. that though, because it's relatable, right? Everyone makes yeah. mistakes, everyone Absolutely. you know, has issues that come about, nothing is perfect, that's and right. I think that's gonna um, be really, really well received. Well, it's worked well for me so far, because yeah. I mean, I've, I've never really, um, I've never really followed the path of the typical professional, and particularly in the contracting world, uh, where you you know you you are you're supposed to wear like a collared shirt with like a logo of your company on the side. <laughs> and, you I know, don't see that for some and, reason. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. this wasn't going to work for me. And why were you so drawn to backyards in specific? Like, I mean, you certainly have a niche for that. When you're building something inside a house, there's these there are these things that already exist. You can see them where we are. They're mm -hmm. called walls. And ceilings, and I hate them because restrictive. They're restrictive, yeah. <laughs> mm, and and yeah. you know, more times than not, you can't just let's say you're in a condo, you can't exactly expand into the neighbor's living room. I mean, it's generally right. frowned upon. So, when you're in the backyard space, uh, it, it, I, I've typically I've coined it. It's become a bit of a cliche. People roll their eyes now. Who know me? But I do have an empty canvas to paint on. I have a much wider parameter of creativity that I can I can work within. Mm -hmm. So that's just more fun, for right? sure. And I, I I get bored really quickly. And let's just say I haven't been bored in 23 years of doing what I'm doing. Speaking of, 
you have a beautiful wife and four girls. Yes. With your, everything that you're taking on, how do you find time for that? Is it? Well, I, I don't believe in sleeping. Okay. Because that makes sense. <laughs> My greatest fear in life is being bored. I mean, I do have a very ADHD type of brain, and so uh, let's just say that when you have uh, a house full with, we have a, your wife and your four daughters, it is, a, it is an incredible feeling as a man to walk into the front door of your house and hurt the feelings of five women just by breathing. <laughs> I mean, so, so that part of my life, there's never been a day of boredom. So when is the new show starting to air? So Backyard Revolution is, um, we're hoping that it's going to be airing in either May or June, um, but it's going to depend on how long it takes me to finish it. Now, what um, like geographic locations is the show um, focused in? Well, what makes Backyard Revolution rather unique is the fact that it is one project over 14 episodes. Okay. Yes. Interesting. So that's how you can delve into how the homeowners mm -hmm. are responding to a project all of the little nuances all that are going details. on, all the details, Ooh, which good. allows you to show the mistakes. It takes a, we're talking about a, a backyard project that is wild and crazy, all state-of-the-art technology. I mean, I built a four-season outdoor room with a golf simulator, for Pete's sake. I mean, there's a lot of wow. very cool elements to the project. Yeah, yeah. and it's interesting, because you're going to be, it's almost like watching a series, you're going to have to watch the next one. Oh, you, you will. You need to see the next one. Yeah, because you want to see the final product, right? Just like us, uh, binging on uh, <laughs> shows, yeah. well, Grey's Anatomy or something. That's exactly what it's like. <laughs> and it's, but it's amazing how funny it is that when you make embarrassing mistakes, people seem to like to watch. I mean, it is, it is one of the, the odd things about our culture. And there are a lot of mistakes and a lot of blunders along the well, way. people like reality. It is very, that's yes. the part, that's, you said it right. It's very, very real. And, you know, what we wanted to do, Paul, is to share with our viewers, give them, we only have 30 minutes. So right. We don't have a lot of time. Right, we've, we've taken um, up a lot of time already, yes. I know, and I want to share with them the best ideas. What, what can we share with them? what they can do with your knowledge, and mm -hmm. right now it's complimentary because they can watch this and learn from you. Yeah. Um, what's the best thing they can do in their yards to create value? But we have to go to break. Oh, right. Yeah, so commercials. we'll have a moment, we'll come back. Mm. Don't go away, we'll be right back. If you'd like more information about investing in real estate or have any questions or comments, check us out online at profunds.ca. While you're there, be sure to view our other episodes filled with great real estate knowledge. Hi, I'm Jordan, this is Carmen. Welcome back to 30 Minutes to Wealth. We're here with our guest, Paul LaFrance, and we were just digging into ways that people can add value to their backyards. So Paul, share with us some of your main tips on what people can do today to kind of increase the value of their homes and their properties. Okay, this is gonna get a little deep. Are we, can we get deep? Oh, we're good we with deep. deep. Okay, <laughs> good, because I don't think I'd be as good at what I do if I didn't have um, kind of a deeper desire to understand human psychology. Having the understanding that we are living in the fastest paced culture in the history of humanity I mean, people yeah. are, are dying of stress-related diseases today yeah. and because we were never created to go this fast. We were never created to go at the speed that we go at. I mean, with all the technological advancements that we have created, mm -hmm. we, we, that were, they were supposed to buy us time. It was supposed to free time up. And like morons, we just filled in all that time with more and more work. Yeah, right? yeah. you're so right. You so are. the need to have a place of rest has never been more paramount. Yeah, we're constantly plugged in. It's like no matter what, yeah. right? We get home, we're on our phones answering emails. We're at work, yeah. we're busy. It's just yeah. this constant race. Yeah. It has a psychological effect on mm -hmm. us. Yeah, that's so, intense, yeah. with that in mind, there is an understanding that if I'm going to create something in somebody's backyard space, the purpose and the main thing I'm wanting to do is to draw people into that space for the, for the purpose of getting away from screens. And so, the very first design element that I will, I will encourage my clients to, to introduce is something that's in that backyard space that catches your eye mm -hmm. from the most visible components of your home. I will never start a design unless I see photography from the inside of the house looking out. And why? Because if you have your laptop computer open and you yeah. have 27 emails that you have to answer before 8 p.m. tonight or you know, the Grim Reaper will come. You're gonna get explosive diarrhea. Something bad is gonna happen. 
you know, yeah. that's what we, that's what our, we're programmed to believe, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. If there is not something that's gonna combat this yeah, yeah. in the backyard space that makes you go, you know, a sometimes- sanctuary. A sanctuary. You want to retreat yes. to that space. It's gotta be something that draws you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I will never create a, a backyard project, whether, it, whether it's a deck, whether it's patio, without some sort of aerial feature, without some sort of, of, of whether it's a pergola, whether it's a, a decorative screen, whether it's mm -hmm. a waterfall or a fire feature, something that's drawing the eye. Mm -hmm. So that we can go, it's either the computer or peace, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Slam. It's amazing. Peace. Yeah. And, yeah. and it works, it yeah. really does. It, yeah. it gives you the option. Because if it's not something you're visibly seeing, then it's out of sight, out of mind, out of mind yeah. and human beings follow the path of least resistance. Mm, that's so what types of things like do you create that, you know, give people that visual that makes that like wants to draw them to their backyards? Well, here would be an example. So now now comes in the creativity. Mm -hmm. So let's say if I was designing for you and I said, uh, well, what if we, you know, what is what what are your tastes? What do you mm -hmm. like? And you said, mm -hmm. well, like I love to travel to to waterfalls and one in Venezuela. And I'd be like, hmm, look at my phone and be like, what about this waterfall? What about Angel Falls, one of the tallest waterfalls in the world? Yeah. And you're like, yes, I was there as a child and I saw an angel, you know? <laughs> and I would say, very well, what if I created a, what if I created an illuminated panel that shows you a six foot tall Angel Falls that you're seeing out into your backyard on, a, on, a, on an illuminated panel inside mm -hmm. a decorative screen that when you come home, you're looking out into that picture, right? Wow. You see where the creativity <laughs> yeah. can come in, right? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Anything that you want. That's just one example. Right. Something visual, something that's beautiful. It can be, you know, in my backyard space, for instance, through the center window that you can see, as soon as you walk in the front door, you see a bridge to a 10 by 10 space. Nothing huge. A 10 by 10 seems to be pretty small. The backyard deck I have is only about 500 square feet. No, that's not nothing to sneeze at. But I spend 90% of the time in my backyard yeah. space in a 10 by 10 area. Now, this is a very hard thing for a lot of men to hear. And I'm sorry for the men that are out there that are, that are watching this. But sometimes you can have too much deck. Mm -hmm. This is true. We're going to sit in silence for a minute to let that sink in. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Because it's, a, it's about quality of square footage over quantity. You don't need right. to build something monstrous. Like back in the day, it'd be like, well, I'm gonna build a, a I, want, I want my backyard deck to be the size of a football field so I can feel like a man. Like this is not, no. it's a waste of, that's a waste of money. It is. If, our, if the interior of our houses were built that way, mm -hmm. then it would be, we'd live in these very, very boring oh, it would, places. Oh, yeah. In my backyard space, it is a 10 by 10 space. There are fire features. There are three different fire features, all of which are not very expensive components that you can add in. There's like little water features that are going into a pond. I mean, the pond's nice. full of piranha for, for the sake of, of, of entertainment. Yeah. But it's, it's just something that is not very big, but is very attractive and very drawing. So I what if, for the sake of investors? So yeah. we have investors watching and they want to do something that, or for example, myself. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, I took you to I saw your a, place. Yeah, and we just finished building it. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful home. Gorgeous home. Gorgeous home. Yeah. And it just needs something. And I haven't done anything on the back landscaping. It is sitting on a very pretty creek. It's but beautiful. It's a house for sale. It's yeah. a resale. It's an investment. Yep. Yeah. So you obviously, you know, it's a higher yeah, price. You want to make it nice, but you also want to stay within a reasonable budget to That's make right. sure you're maximizing your return at the end of the day. So what you what do you think? Uh, for our viewers, if you're if you have investment properties, what are the best things that you can do uh, with with the least amount of money being spent that ha you have seen through experience that create demand for that type of property? Because I know when we spoke, you were you were speaking to us about a house that was listed and there were bidding wars on it because right. of what you created. Yep. And then I went, ching, you gotta come to my house. Um, yeah, like, and I mean, all things considered, two houses next door, side by side, similar, and one with a gorgeous backyard and one doesn't offer that, people are gonna be drawn to that backyard. They right? really because are. it's this whole environment that they want to, they well, envision themselves in, yeah. right? It's what you, yeah. what you do when you come home from work and on the weekends you hang out in your yard and, and you sip on a glass of wine mm -hmm. if you drink wine and, you know, so it has to be beautiful, but what do you think there is the best? To, there has, so with the knowledge that people want that draw into the backyard space, but one of the major elements is they wanna be able to go into that backyard space without looking around, thinking about all the maintenance they have to do. Mm, that's, that's true. key. 
ultra low maintenance materials, while they are more expensive, will have a radical impact on your resale value because maintenance free is a humongous buzzword when it comes to buying a place. If you're going in and you see a lovely backyard, it could be a brand new backyard project that's done and it's in pressure treated lumber. So you know that every single year you're gonna be out there staining, sanding, restaining, and God forbid it's cedar on the floor because then it goes gray every single year. I talk to people who have cedar decks. Mm -hmm. and, and when I bring this up, they begin to weep immediately. It's very sad. <laughs> Even large wrestling type men begin to weep. And you know, it's consoling and then I convince them to let me resurface their project. We're talking about in the decking realm, this is absolutely important to have a surface that is ultra low maintenance, which means you're just washing it every now and then like you wash your car. But here's the key, here's, here's for the investors. If you are to say spend, let's just pick a benchmark number of a very small pressure treated project that's $10,000, well that would translate to about say 12,500 in cedar, which would translate to about 15 to 16,000 in composite. Okay. Uh, or PVC, That's depending a good comparison on the comparison there, yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you build it in pressure treated or in cedar, you are talking about going into the backyard, digging a hole, and putting that money into the hole never to be seen again. Mm -hmm. Because somebody's going to, in fact, it can be a detriment to your property value because, mm -hmm. well, think about a swimming pool. Mm -hmm. Somebody puts in a yeah. swimming pool. Somebody might say, I love the house, but I don't want the pool because. <laughs> they know it's going to cost $7,000 to fill that pool, and if they say, mm -hmm. well, I don't want the maintenance of the pool. People get a pool because they want a pool. They don't get a right. pool necessarily to add property value. Yeah, so a wooden deck has fallen now into that same category. Nobody wants to come in and say, I'm going to have to maintain this every year. I don't have that kind of time. I'm going to have to resurface this. It can actually be a detriment to your property value. However, a deck that is so boring that it makes my eyes bleed a square box <laughs> will still give you 90% return on investment. Wow. wow. Now you add some creativity into that. So you have the ultra low maintenance factor for the, for the investor so that the homeowner coming in is going, I am not having to worry about maintaining this. Now I've kicked it up with a level of creativity where it's just, you don't blow the doors off. It's got evening potential, lighting, mm -hmm. massively huge. You mm -hmm. have to incorporate lighting. That way, on a Wednesday evening, you are coming home and enjoying the backyard just as much as you were having the barbecues with your friends on, mm -hmm. on a Saturday afternoon. Um, and it's so important to understand that just like staging a house, everyone knows about the world of staging. Mm -hmm. You're going to sell a house, staging the house is, is incredibly important. Mm -hmm. Yes. So now you can barely tell exterior furniture apart from interior yeah. furniture. Staging and creating an environment that is even if, even if it's just a square. So at your place, for instance, yes. if we create even a, a 10 by 10 square low level deck, it could even be a patio, a patio stone. And we have four posts coming up with beams that match the interior beams that are inside your house. Mm -hmm. Throw some lighting in there, hang some plants, put some furniture around with a central fire pit, gas, you run, you know, it could be propane or you can run a gas line to it and suddenly just by doing that with maybe just a simple gardening edge around you have created a destination without that. having to blow the doors off and the most important part is that the minute you are in that home you can see it yeah. from the most highly trafficked areas of the house it'll that will draw people into that space now you're creating an emotional response. You see, that's the musician. I love that idea. Yeah. That emotional response is imperative, particularly when you're talking about resale value. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you think of outdoor kitchens? Well, I love them mm -hmm. because I'm trying to uh, create the most unusual and creative outdoor kitchens. The kitchen in most people's homes with four teenage daughters, our kitchen at home inside the house yeah, is imagine. Grand Central Station. Yeah. I mean, there might as well be just a Sharknado going through there all day long. <laughs> Right. Oh. But most people are aware that off their kitchen door is the entrance into the backyard. In most houses, it's very mm -hmm. close by. So if you can create something where you walk through that space and everything stays behind you, now you're on to something. Yeah, I love oh. that. That's mm -hmm. amazing. Very well, cool. in, in this specific house, we have a creek in the back and wood, so it would be a perfect place to do something like that. Yeah. Muskoka in the city. One other important factor that I, I think is, is generally not thought about is in traditional backyard transformations, you have the house and everything is directly outside the door right there. Mm -hmm. But in so many of the designs that I will do, I will lead people away 
to the back ends of their property, whether it's 30 feet away or 300 feet away, mm -hmm. because there is something incredibly uh, psychologically rewarding about being able to get away from the house, even if you're still on your own property. Mm -hmm. And even if it's just sitting in a 10 by 10 space, whether it's a pergola or a gazebo, or a four season room that's yeah. winterized, mm -hmm. in, so you can actually go out there in the middle of January, but I will turn it so that it's facing back toward the house, right? Because cool. oftentimes not everyone is facing is sitting on the water or on you know on mm -hmm. rolling hills and mountains. Often we're looking into someone else's property. Right. So if yeah. you can do something that allows you to turn it away, so you're looking at that that thing facing back toward you. When you're out there, it's you are officially away. You're literally looking at your life inside the box that is your home. That's pretty cool. And I can tell you, my wife and I have made more of, all, of the important decisions in our life sitting in that little 10 by 10 space walk, looking back toward our house and there's something about it being away from the property. Very interesting. I love that. Most it's people really never cool. even go back there. Yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of it's well, you know, a different we're, way of looking we're at we're it. We're almost out of we're we're out of time. I mean, hmm. we have to have you back on for sure oh, oh, and right. continue this conversation <laughs> because this is just so valuable. I'm sure our viewers are thrilled with the information that you provide. So thank you so much. Thank you My so pleasure. much for joining us today. Mm -hmm. If you are interested in learning more about real estate investing, you can go to profunds.ca. And please feel free to check out our other real estate investing videos at 30minutes12.com. That's it. Our time is up. Go create wealth.